Welcome to the nonprofit world. My name is Paula Sorrells Bean, and I'm your guest host today. I have uh, with me today um, three guests, and um, they are all volunteers for various organizations. And, and as we know, in, in uh, the nonprofit world, it's very important uh, to have our volunteers. And uh, so we're going to um, get to talk with some volunteers today that um, will be able to uh, just share some of their personal experiences, um, why they got involved with their, the organizations that they're involved with, and um, just a little bit about what they're doing. So first of all, let me introduce you to um, Diane Church. Uh, she is a highly motivated, high energy professional journalist. And in her uh, free time, uh, she volunteers for some various uh, organizations. And then we also have uh, Zach Furlan, who is a volunteer yeah. um, here at uh, Nutmeg TV. And uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about that uh, in a little while. Not and far. then we also have uh, Leslie Gordon. And uh, she was a volunteer also here and um, with the uh, Day, uh, Dog Star Rescue. So uh, welcome, each of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank glad, you. Glad you're here. Um, I want to start off, Diane, just um, um, asking you a little bit about your um, background. Um, you're, you are a graduate of uh, uh, Central Connecticut State University, where you study communications and media. And um, you've also been a staff writer at both the daily and weekly newspaper, mm -hmm. and you've done some freelance writing as well. Uh, would you just tell us a little bit about uh, your newspaper background and what you're doing today? Well, I was a <clears throat> reporter for about uh, 15 years altogether. And I, I covered um, various towns I uh, covered actually Plainville and Bristol and uh, <clears throat> New Britain and Southington and well that was most recently at the Bristol Press and the New Britain Herald and I also covered other towns in other parts of the state. Wonderful. That's great. And Zach, um, not only are you a volunteer here yeah. at Nutmeg TV, but uh, you are a student. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us where you're a student and what you're studying? Yeah, I go to uh, Tunxis Community College, and uh, this is my first semester, uh, second semester there, first year here. And I'm studying communication, so I can be a graphic designer or like a filmmaker or a photographer, you know. Just get the whole broad spectrum of that study down so I can get as many career opportunities as I want. Wonderful, that yeah. sounds great, awesome. And Leslie, how about you? What, um, uh, besides your volunteer work, uh, what else are you uh, doing? I'm a yoga teacher, okay. and I also do Thai massage, and I work part-time in an attorney's office as well. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Okay, well let's talk a little bit about the organizations that, um, that you volunteer for. Um, Diane, I know that um, one of the ones that uh, you volunteer for is the Literary Literacy Volunteers of Central Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you do there. I'm a tutor. I, um, I'm tutoring in basic literacy. So the people that I work with, they, they speak fine English. They're not um, immigrants that need to learn English, but they're people who have been in you know, they were born and raised in, in the United States, but they need help with reading. They never really got that far in reading. Even though they graduated high school, they still, their reading is like second grade level. So I work with them, trying to get them to, you know, practice reading and get better at it. And um, we do spelling and uh, vocabulary work and a lot of reading. There, there's um, there's different publications for adult um, people who are still learning to read. So we use those, and we just you know just keep on <laughs> keep on you, going along. How did you get involved with them? What what drove you to the uh, literacy um, volunteer agency? I've always loved to read, and I thought that other people should 
let, you know, learn to read, that everyone should learn to read. Mm -hmm. So I decided to share the gift of literacy with others. And I saw it, it, it was um, actually, I got an email from a library and it was right at the bottom. It said, literacy volunteers is now looking for tutors. So I, you know, I signed up. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, you also have um, um, recently been an office assistant, assistant at the Urban League of Greater Hartford. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about what the Urban League does and what you do there? Okay. Well, the, the branch that I was working in, I know they, they also provide jobs and you know, help people to find jobs and provide training and things like that. But I was in the housing department and what they do there is they give classes for people who want to buy a house. There's an eight hour class that's held on Saturdays and that's like the first step. People go to that class and they learn a lot about the ins and outs of buying a house and getting a mortgage and all those sort of things mm -hmm. that, that are good to know when you buy a house, such as you know about getting an inspection Right. And um, so after that, then if they they go on and um, they talk one on one with a housing counselor, and then after that um, they might go out and start looking at houses. And if they find one, they have they go to the pre closing class. That's a three hour class, and it's in the evenings. And there they they learn more, you know, about mm -hmm. the closing process. So it gives them the opportunity to see what they're going to be going through in purchasing a home mm -hmm. and to, to get an idea of what they're doing prior to actually going through the process. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's great. Um, and the other organization that, um, that you volunteer, you're actually on the board of directors for, is the OIC New Britain. Mm -hmm. So would you tell us what OIC is and uh, what your role is there? Okay. OIC stands for Opportunities Industrialization Center. Mm -hmm. It was started in Philadelphia by a Reverend Leon Sullivan who wanted to help um, low-income people, mostly people of color, better themselves. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they, there's various training programs and they also concentrate a lot now on middle school and high school students. They have after school programs for them, um, character development. Wonderful. And that's, that's good because it helps them you know, figure out what they want to do in life and it keeps them off the streets. Wonderful, wonderful, that's great. And Zach. Yes. <laughs> um, you are a volunteer here at Nutmeg TV. Yeah. Uh, so how did how did you what brought you here to Nutmeg? How did you get involved here? <clears throat> well, based on you know what career path I want and my interest in you know film and TV and stuff, I one day I was reading the newspaper and I saw an article that said free classes at Nutmeg, and I was like, you know what, Dad, let's do it together. So we, we went up, we signed up, we took the classes, and here I am, here you are. volunteering for almost a year now. And it's very, I'm very satisfied with what, what I've done here, you know, and how I've become better at my craft. So tell, so tell, me, about, um, tell me about the uh, class that you took. So there's three classes here that they provide. There is an editing class which teaches you the basics of Premiere and also how to edit shows that you shoot either in here or off-site. And then there's the, the, the next class is a, a field production class. So they bring you in here and they teach you all about how to construct and deconstruct a tripod and a camera. So, and they show you how to set the white balance, how to get the right focus, and how to get better shots, pretty much. And then the third class is in here in studio. We learn how to do, use these cameras, how to set up sets like this, and how to be directors or camera operators or audio. 
and they teach you all that's in the studio. So what, um, what part of that, or which, which uh, task that you do here do you like best? I like to do camera operating a lot, mm -hmm. especially for one of the shows here is they have a music show. And I'm always in here doing some fancy dynamic shots. So, you know, give some emphasis and some emotion to, you know, the musicians playing their music. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's great. Well, I'll say that um, as we were, as you were setting everything up for today, I was yeah. very impressed. You seem to know your way around and and uh, be able to get the things out that uh, uh, to get everything started. So yeah, I try and be efficient here. Very you know? good job. Don't waste people's time. Very good job. All right, and uh, and I let me say too that uh, we want to um, wish Zach a very happy birthday today. Yeah. It's his birthday, so happy birthday, Thank Zach. Thank you very much. Yeah, happy birthday, <laughs> um, Leslie. So you're a volunteer here also at Nutmeg. I am. Uh, so I, I'm a new volunteer okay. at Nutmeg. However, I did work at the West Hartford Public Access Station for a long time because I, in what I call my former life before kids. I had a, a TV show there. Um, I used to work for the Noah Webster House, which is a nonprofit in Connecticut, and um, I was the volunteer coordinator, but I also coordinated all the public programs there, so we had a TV show as part of our outreach, and, and I did that. So um, I have way back experience that is slowly com dripping back into my brain, um, but I look forward to you know being at this station. It's close to my home. There's it's filled with wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like at this time in my life, it's a new skill set that um, I'm really enjoying. It's not like work, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of the things that I, I do in my life now are work. And so it's fun to have something to do that's, that's fun and interesting and totally different mm -hmm. from what I do for work. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So what do you uh, think the value and importance of volunteering? What is the value and importance of volunteering to you? Well, to me, um, because I've always been involved with volunteers, I was the volunteer coordinator uh, at the Noah Webster House, and so I relied on volunteers mm -hmm. to run that house. You know, we had, we had a small staff that was paid, but, but we had over 100 volunteers. I don't know what their statistics on volunteers are now there, but um, the house wouldn't have run without volunteers. And I was always amazed at the dedication of these people that worked there and everywhere that I've, I've worked with volunteers. I, was, I did PTO forever when my kids were uh, it's in school and all of those types of volunteer jobs that are filled main, mainly by moms, some dads too. And um, none of that, the in-school tutoring and um, the library work and the PTO that, that gives money and, and um, runs a lot of activities, none of that would happen. Mm -hmm. So it's really wonderful when people decide that volunteering is something um, that's important. And, and I feel like it's something that is, <clears throat> it's just vital. You know, if we all start thinking only of things that will make money, I think mm -hmm. we lose some sort of um, heart mm, that's true. That's in our true. society. Um, you know, because there's something about volunteering that you're giving, but you're also receiving so much more, and you realize how, um, how grateful people are, mm. you know, when you step forward and say, I'm, I'm actually willing to do something for no money. Um, and also the people that you work with, the other volunteers, there's this connection, this little family that forms, mm -hmm. this community, it's a nice place. If there's people that are lonely out there, I would say come to your Nutmeg TV and, and be a volunteer because you don't have to be lonely. There, mm -hmm. are, there are other people who are here that, that are warm and friendly and wonderful and you'll learn a new skill and it doesn't cost you anything. Mm -hmm. And you know, so there's just so much, it's so rich. Mm -hmm. Have you found um, when you were uh, <coughs> managing or coordinating volunteers uh, that there were times when you were actually able to hire um, volunteers to work full time? I personally never did that, but yes, mm -hmm. a lot of people would come to the staff as a volunteer first. Mm -hmm. um, and Or I came to the staff as a museum teacher. I was teaching 
open earth cooking and weaving and um, wool, you know, wool production, spinning on the spinning wheel. I was doing all that very part time, and then I eventually made my way up to being a lead teacher and then the coordinator volunteers. And so I entered at a, you know, at a very part time, paid but very mm -hmm. part time. A lot of the people that volunteered at the Noah Webster House at that time were older people who had already had a career and they were, were retired. Right. And they wanted to have something mm -hmm. um, fun to do or something to fill their time. New, we, we had a great training program there. They pro I imagine they still do, and like many of the museums around here, I'm sure. So you, you end up feeling like you're taking a course mm -hmm. and learning so much about the person whose home it used to be or whatever, what their skill was. You know, no Webster was, he was an interesting guy. And it took him, I didn't intend to talk about Noah Webster, but it did take him 27 years to write that dictionary that he mm -hmm. wrote. It was the first American dictionary. And I mean, how many of us stick to a project anymore for, the, for that length of time? Mm, that's a long time. It's crazy. Yeah. So of course, now we can find our information in easier ways than Noah Webster could. But mm -hmm. yeah. So Zach, um, for you, what is the value and importance of volunteering? It's the sense of giving back, and it's also a sense of community, because you know these other volunteers, they're part of your community, and they're willing to help out just like you are. And I think that's, that's an amazing thing. That's and amazing. yeah, I wish I could do more volunteering, but you know, the time of the day, you know, there's, there's not enough time. Diane, for, um, for you, what is the value and importance of, of volunteering? Well, it's about, you know, be doing something good, mm -hmm. helping others. I, I really like helping other people. Mm -hmm. And it's a productive way to, um, to spend time. And I, um, I really enjoy it. Great, great. Um, so, do you ever feel like um, you've come across a time or come upon a time when, when um, it's too much? Your time of volunteering is is too much, and you need to cut back. Or do you have any thoughts on that, um, Leslie? How about you? Um, well, I do cut back when I need to cut back. Uh, you know when. <clears throat> Or the, or I should say maybe the, the job changes. Mm -hmm. Like when I had my children, I spent much of my time volunteering in the schools. And um, my last son, my youngest son, just he was a senior last year in high school, so he's in college this year. And, and then that all, it's kind of like all of a sudden, I'm sure that they would still take me if I wanted to volunteer at the school. Um, but I've moved on to this. This is the, the new thing. It's a new chapter, I guess. So I think every chapter in your life can have a different, um, a different way to give back, but also a different time commitment. I had more time to spend in the schools when my kids were little. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm focusing more on work a little bit, so I have less time to volunteer. But part of my motive for volunteering here was to make myself find the time okay. again to volunteer, to sign up for something that took a chunk of my time. And I have to say, when I was driving over here, um, it was one of the first times in a long time that I actually was joyful about driving somewhere. Because usually I'm driving to work, which I love my work, but I'm still driving to work. It's like someplace I have to be. Mm -hmm. And here, I signed up for this kind of on a whim this week to come and volunteer for this show. And, and, um, and I was really looking forward to being here and, and being here and learning something new and different. So. Mm -hmm. so Leslie, have you volunteered for shows here before? Um, this is the first, believe it or not, the first day that uh, this was my very first, you know, premier volunteer mm -hmm. experience here at Nutmeg TV. I did the classes that Zach said, mm -hmm. so I was here uh, for those, and I, I signed up today so I could learn about um, the shows and how to, I didn't know what I was going to do, I just, I figured I'd show up and, and find out when I mm -hmm. got here. Um, I'm also involved in an, another organization called Dog Star Rescue. 
I'm a volunteer for them. What I've done with them is um, they will come to the yoga studio where I work and bring their all the materials they need to make dog beds. And they make dog beds out of, believe it or not, PVC pipe with some sort of a, a mesh that serves as the actual bed. And the PVC pipe lifts the beds off the ground so that, and then they send all these beds down to shelters, mostly in the south, because that's where a lot of the dogs come from these days. And it keeps the dogs off the cold floor yeah. of the shelter. And um, so we've made many, 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 many dog beds for Dogstar, and that is a blast. Mm -hmm. It really is, because everybody that comes loves animals, and some people bring their dogs, and you know, we just, we crank out these dog beds, and we know we're doing something good, because mm -hmm. we all, you know, adore these creatures. So, um, so anyway, that'd be fun to do for a show sometime, and I think I will. <laughs> um, videotape making dog beds for Dogstar. What, what a great organization mm -hmm. they are. So. Yeah. Now, um, Zach, you've kind of grown up with technology. Um, yeah. So, um, but I'm going to ask uh, Diane and Leslie, um, how do you think the age of technology, um, or how has it affected volunteerism for you? Well, it's created new opportunities. Um, actually, I, I. Uh, Years ago, I, I did not volunteer when I was working full time. Mm -hmm. I always thought about it, but I didn't really have time until you know a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, Leslie, how about you? If you you volunteered years ago at the mm -hmm. Noah Webster House, um, that was probably a little bit before, certainly before the technology that we have today. Um, do you? since a change in how volunteering works with the new technology? Well, I imagine, you know, if I were a volunteer coordinator right now, I think I would be gleeful with all the ease at, at which you can communicate with people mm -hmm. because we didn't have that. Um, I remember sitting in front of the very first computer I ever sat in front of at the No Webster House and had to figure out painstakingly how to make a brochure and all of these things and teach myself. Mm -hmm. And now I see what we have available to us and how easy all of that is. Mm -hmm. And I send out my own emails now, um, you know, monthly, bi-monthly to my mailing list and I just, it's just so easy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I could, you know, in a different show, a show about technology, I could tell you all the things I don't like about it, you know, but right. I do think that it's it's helped a lot. I know, you know, Chris here, he sends us out these e-blasts regularly, and it's mm -hmm. just so easy. It's like, they're coming, and you know you have all these opportunities available. He doesn't have to pick up the phone and call us, and, you know, so all of those things, I think, are are good, are good for volunteering. Yes, it makes communication much easier. Mm -hmm. I actually, several years ago, I, I forgot, I used to um, volunteer to do a, a newsletter mm -hmm. for a religious group, and we used to do that, and that was, it took a while. You had to learn, right. you know, the, the software mm -hmm. and lay out the newsletter, but that, that was a good experience. Yeah. And also at the Urban League, I, um, I did use the computer uh, at certain times. I, I got very good at Excel. <laughs> had to use that one a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so I'm I'm grateful that I I got that experience. Mm -hmm. I can put it on my resume. Yeah, it does. Um, the technology today does uh, make it a lot easier. There are times, uh, Leslie, as I think you were alluding to, that that it is a challenge. Um, but when we have the opportunity to um, um, uh, do things on Excel, we've got databases, we've got all kinds of things where we can enter in data and, and be able to get back reports that we want, and then also to, um, um, to be able to contact people easily. That's, I think, one of the key things yeah. is to, to have almost immediate access to, uh, to contacting people. So that's, um, that's really good. So. Um, Diane, do you ever feel do you, do you ever feel like you're volunteering like it's overwhelming or it's just it's just too much at the time? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, actually, sometimes it, it is. Mm -hmm. 
you, you have to pace yourself. Like at the Urban League, they had a lot for me to do, and they didn't have money to hire somebody as an office assistant. Mm. So I was there a lot, and I, I just kind of got so involved with that, and I, I was putting off job searching. And so I kind of pulled back from that now, and I'm, I'm not really what, sure what the status of the housing program is because one woman retired, and they couldn't replace her. But they, were, they were looking for someone. Mm -hmm. And then um, the, the woman who manages the program got sick. And I'm, I'm not sure if she's back yet. Okay. So I'm not sure how they're doing with their housing education. So sometimes as a volunteer, you get pulled in for more than just mm -hmm. your volunteer hours. Yes, I, I was working there many hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I had to pull to back, back and say, yeah, I, this is not what, really what I signed up for. Yeah, that's right. I, I was glad to help them, but I, you know, I need mm -hmm. to um, concentrate on finding a paying job. Yeah. They were going to hire me, but they just don't have the money. The grant writing woman um, is trying, mm -hmm. so she's looking for grants. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Zach? Have you reached that point yet where volunteering is overwhelming or, or becoming too much? Um, no. I, I mean, there's times when it's just me running the show, and that sometimes is a little stressful, but um, most of the time, it's good. Uh, I manage my time well, so I can be here, I can be at school, and. Uh, do my, you know, schoolwork and look for a job as well as a part-time job. Mm -hmm. okay. But right. overall, I don't think it's too overwhelming. Okay. Leslie, any, any additional comments on? Well, I will say I did feel overwhelmed at times when I was volunteering for the PTO. And I think the reason is um, because you'll, and I'm sure this is an experience that many volunteers will have or do have is that the same people volunteer all the time. So <clears throat> you end up working with the same people, which is great, but you also wonder why the other ones aren't volunteering. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, in, in, this, in a situation like the PTO where everybody's children are going to the school mm -hmm. and, and you get the same group of 10 or 12 or, or whoever that always seem to be very involved, mm -hmm. you know, various reasons for that. But, I, but at times that does get a little frustrating, I will say, mm -hmm. so. Okay, um, there are a lot of nonprofit organizations out there, a lot of organizations in our schools, in our churches, in our community um, that you can get involved with. Um, so, so Zach, tell me why, tell us why you chose Nutmeg TV for uh, your place to volunteer? Well, like I said uh, in that newspaper ad, it piqued my interest. I was like, oh, I can help out at a TV studio? That's, that's crazy. Because I was young and I was naive and stuff, so I was like, oh, I want to do everything, yay. <laughs> but um, that's how I got into Nutmeg and how I got into their nonprofit organization. So. Had you volunteered in any other uh, place before, no, uh, that before was, Nutmeg? No, that was actually my, this is actually my first volunteering opportunity. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Great. And Leslie, how did you, um, like with Noah Webster House, how did you get involved with that? I answered an ad. Mm -hmm. I, um, I had just moved up from New York City and, you know, my husband at the time and I decided that we wanted to get out of the city and we didn't have jobs, we just quit our jobs. The things you can do before you have children, Yes. <laughs> right? And um, so we said, well, we can find works either in Springfield or Hartford. So we ended up uh, in East Windsor, right kind of in the middle. And then just both started looking for jobs at that point and that came up. I, I've always, I came from the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. I was, I was working there in Brooklyn, and that is a magical place, and it still is. And, um, and I knew that if my life was going to be interesting, I needed to not be stuck in an office. 
And so I have always looked for interesting jobs, and I've always had really interesting jobs as a result of that. And um, so that's, that's kind of how I ended up Great. there. Okay. And Diane, you told us how you got involved with the um, literacy volunteers because you love to read. Mm -hmm. um, but how did you, what drove you to um, the Urban League and to the OIC New Britain? Well, it just happens to, to uh, meeting certain people. Like I went to a, a networking uh, class, and that's where I, I met the man who is president of the board on OIC, okay. and he invited me to um, to come to a couple of meetings and see what it's about. And the executive director um, asked if I would like to to join the board. Mm. So so I did. Wonderful, wonderful. So are there any are there other organizations that um, that you are considering volunteering for? Or are you kind of happy with the three that um, that you're uh, working in right now? Well, I'm open to ideas, mm -hmm. but I, I need to focus more on, on getting a paying job. Mm -hmm. How about you, Zach? Have you thought about any other organizations that, um, that you might be interested in volunteering for, or, or is this taking up enough of your time and energy to? Well, maybe once I, you know, later down the year, later down the road, um, I mean, I live in Bristol now, and I I'm for sure know that there's a lot of nonprofits in Bristol, like um, either helping the homeless shelter out or maybe working with the you know United Way or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that'd be a great place, great places to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. What kind of um, advice would you give for people that are looking to volunteer? Just do it. Just do it. Just do it, yeah. Do it. Go out on a whim and just go volunteer because mm -hmm. you'll, you'll love the result from doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you feel like it's important to have, um, for, for the places where you volunteer, for it to be something that you're passionate about, something that, that is interesting to you, or do you feel like you can just go volunteer any place. Yeah, find something that you can relate to in a way. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you cuz you love doing that. It's your passion. And you get to use that passion to help other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, what could be better? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Diana, you have anything to add to that? Well, you might uh, volunteer <laughs> for something that you don't know much about, and maybe that will become a, a new passion for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's true. That's a good point. I would, yeah, I would say the same thing. I think it's a great way to learn a new skill. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you have a tiny little bit of interest, um, you know, I, I'd done this before a little bit, so I was, I knew I was interested, and in, I'd been on a couple of Joyce St. Germain shows here, um, but I know nothing about you know, editing and all of those things. So I thought, geez, you know, it's it's a great time in my life to learn a new skill. Mm -hmm. And um, and I hope you stay the way you are, Zach, and want to keep learning everything because yeah. I, I feel like that's what really keeps life interesting and, um, and makes you want to keep putting one foot, you know, in front of the other. Um, and I think there's so many different kinds of volunteer opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to sit at a desk and learn Excel or whatever, or if you want to be doing a TV show remotely or whatever, uh -huh. yeah. like you can do whatever you want out there. There's, there's people looking for volunteers. And there's probably organizations that don't even have volunteers that would love it if you walked in and said, I'd like to volunteer for you. Mm -hmm. And they'll probably find something for you to do. Like you can make your own position. Oh, yeah. absolutely. You know? Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool and fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so for you, Leslie, is is the volunteering is it is it more of a giving back or is it kind of a personal trying to fill a void? <laughs> I feel like I'm at my therapist's <laughs> now. Um, no, it's I don't know. It's both. It's just I grew up in a house where we volunteered. Mm -hmm. We always 
did. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, you know, we belonged to a church. We were always helping people that way. My father, who's 80 now, until a couple years ago, dressed up like Santa Claus every year for the kids whose parents were incarcerated, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. I mean, I just, I've always volunteered. So for me, it's kind of like this, this is how you live your life, mm -hmm. giving back to other people. And um, so I can't imagine it being any other way. I think it goes both ways. I get a lot out of it because, mm -hmm. and I learn new skills, but I also feel like I'm helping other people. Like we're helping this show today, yeah. being a part of it. So, and the dog star, I'm helping these, you know, in, poor innocent creatures who, mm -hmm. for no fault of their own, have found themselves in uh, a bad situation. So um, that is extremely rewarding and fulfilling, not only to me, but I would think to the whoever's on the receiving end of that. So. Yeah. So, um, Zach, how about you? Do you do you feel like your volunteering is really to give back, or is it a, just a personal? Um, you're either filling a void or just trying to find a way to um, express yourself maybe? Um, well, part, yeah, part of it is to help back, you know, because these people, they want to make shows. They want to bring their messages to, you know, all the viewers who watch Nutmeg TV. But um, I do feel like it fills a void and, well, not void, but um, improves myself because, you know, I get to work hands-on with the equipment here, mm -hmm. which in turn will um, provide me more experience with, you know, either being in the movie industry or, you know, making my own stuff as a freelancer, so. Great, wonderful. Diane, same question. Um, do you feel like it's more of a giving back or uh, filling a void or? Well, something else. There are many reasons to volunteer. I, I like to meet new people. Mm -hmm. that volunteering, you do meet very nice people. And you learn new skills, and it gives you something to do and something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Do you think, do you feel like there's a connection between um, religion and volunteering? Mm. Well, it's very possible that, you know, people who are religious tend to, to volunteer more, mm -hmm. but non-religious people volunteer as well. Okay. All right. So it, it really doesn't matter. It's more, you know, what's inside. Mm -hmm. And, you know, religion could be part of it, but not always. Not always. Okay. Zach, what do you think about that? I think there's a connection between religion and volunteerism. Well, I'm not religious myself, so I can't really say on the other party part of the spectrum, but um, there might be a correlation. I mean, uh, there's definitely values that some of these religions teach you, you know, like to give. But um, yeah, um, I agree with what Diane said, how you know, it could be both ways, you know, people who are religious and who aren't volunteer, you know. Okay, Leslie, you want to add to that? I think that um, churches give you an opportunity. They, they provide a lot of opportunities. I, when I was a member of a church, we always had something going on, you know, opportunities to deliver gifts at Christmas time or collections for various things for... There were disaster relief things that we did, but um, I don't think, I, I think there are many, many wonderful people in the world who are not religious, and I think that the, that is the trend. And I, I think that there's, the people, I, I think it depends also on where you volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, like if you're volunteering in the school, you might exclusively be doing that because your child goes there and you want their school experience sure. to be better. I don't think you have to be religious. Um, here, you don't have to, I don't think you necessarily have to be religious to want to volunteer here. Mm -hmm. um, I think, um, and same with the No Webster House. I think the people who volunteered there, though some of them were religious, many of them just really had this 
strange passion for Noah Webster, uh -huh. right? Or words, or writing, or you know, or that time period, or West Hartford in mm -hmm. that time period, and because it's also the Noah Webster House is also the West Hartford Historical Society. So there's this crossover of the history of the town. So no, I I think I think there is not a correlation personally. Okay. All right. Do. Um how do you feel that gender, what role do you feel gender plays in volunteering? Do you think there are more opportunities for women to uh, volunteer or men to volunteer? Or you think there's places where um, uh, there are definitely more women volunteering for certain things than men? What, do you, what are your uh, comments on that? Well, uh, when, when I was volunteering in this school, it was mostly women because of the time that we needed volunteers. Mm -hmm. Most of the men were off at work. Women were either, well, many women were working, but there were a lot of stay-at-home mom type people or peop women with very flexible schedules because I found that women got very creative once they had children with how they made money, when they made money, because they the caregiving tended to go to the woman most. I, I don't want to sound like I'm living on Little House in the Prairie, but there still is this role that women play with children. Um, and so they were the available and ready volunteers. Um, I think that there are lots of opportunities for men. There's still the Boy Scouts, even though there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of mothers that do leading now, but there's a lot of men in those roles. I was also a volunteer at the Roaring Brook Nature Center. There are a lot of men who volunteered at the Roaring Brook Nature Center. Um, so I think it really depends on where you are in the time of the day that volunteers are needed. Mm -hmm. okay. Zach, what do you, what's your take on that? Um, well, honestly, I believe gender is a very complicated subject now with everything going on and all these, you know, different types of genders, but um, I do agree with what Leslie said, how it depends on, you know, where the, these individuals work, you know, how busy they are, what's on, what's the responsibilities they have, you know, as like a caregiver or like a homeowner or maybe even like a CEO of a business. and. I don't think gender really defines who volunteers more or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Diane, in, in the organizations that, that you are a part of, um, do you see any relationship with gender? I mean, as far as, mm -hmm. is there, are there more women, more men, or is it about equal? Well, at Literacy Volunteers, women definitely outnumber men. Most of the tutors are woman over 50. Mm -hmm. And at the Urban League, there were, there were men and women volunteering there. Mm -hmm. And at OIC, um, there, there are a lot of volunteers there as well. Okay. I haven't seen a lot of them, but they seem to be mostly female. Okay. Right. Because they, they want, you know, the word, like Leslie said, they, they're doing it because of their children. Mm -hmm. They want to be sure that their children have a good experience. Mm -hmm. How, do, you, do you feel like the nonprofits are valuable in, in our communities and in our state? And, and oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. they, they do a lot. They provide a lot of services. And unfortunately, a lot of them are uh, suffering financially right now. So, it's you know, they they need volunteers. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's one of the things that we try to do here at the nonprofit world is help help people to understand what um, what different nonprofit organizations do, and um, how people can get involved with them, and how they can help uh, financially and and otherwise. Yeah. So what um, for you, Leslie? What how how what is the value of nonprofits in, in our communities? I feel, like, um, I feel like the world would be a very different place if there weren't any nonprofit organizations. Um, 
I feel like they're kind of the heart and soul of our our communities. Mm -hmm. um, I feel very badly about the funding issues around nonprofits. I remember um, many times not having enough money to do what I really wanted to do at the Noah Webster House. And any time I wanted to do anything extra, I paid for it myself because mm -hmm. I really wanted to do it. Yet I could go downtown, this is before I had children, and go to happy hour with my husband who worked for a corporation. And there was more spent on happy hour mm. by the corporation than I had in my budget at the No Webster House. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like there was something wrong with that. And I still think that there's something wrong with that. Um, I'm not sure that that will ever change in the, the way we've set up our economy. Mm -hmm. um, I think there has to be some dire circumstances before any of that will change, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I feel like the nonprofits are like, almost like the mothers who put their arms around um, people and animals and and uh, and do the good and deep and spiritual and solid work that needs to be done so that we can survive on this planet. Right. I mean, I don't want to sound like, well, I do want to sound like that, I guess. I mean, it's important and nonprofits are important. I agree. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm true. pretty passionate about them. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, Diane, you had mentioned to me earlier that um, with the OIC that you are part of what you're doing there as a board member is working on the upcoming gala, is mm -hmm. that correct? So right. can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that? It's, is it a fundraising gala? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, they do it every year and there's food and usually um, some speeches. Uh, last year they had a very good one some uh, some group of a uh, group of people in our board made a video and they talked to people who had gone through OIC in the past and, uh, and you know learned their skills there and went on to good jobs mm -hmm. and that that was very very nice mm -hmm. part of it and you know it's just a big thing we have a uh, silent auction mm -hmm. and it's it's nice you know people dress up and it's a night out and they meet other people who are interested in OIC. Wonderful. Yeah. So there are a lot of ways to, um, that organizations do fundraising. Um, are there any that, that you're familiar with, Leslie, that uh, in the things that you're involved with? As far as how they do fundraising, um, well, you know, we've done we've done fundraising in a lot of different ways um, over the many organizations that I've been involved with. A lot of organizations do auctions now. They've been doing auctions for a while, silent auctions, live auctions, and those, those are, they bring in a lot of money. Um, so that's become a very popular thing. Mm -hmm. um, I know Gifts of Love, another organization that I've belonged to, I used to work on their galas, um, and they always raised a great deal of money. We used to do a, uh, at No Webster House, we did an auction where we would s send out dictionaries to famous people and they would autograph them and send them back. And so we would do this dictionary auction. Mm -hmm. And that was fun for a lot of years. I think that's like the major way that people really raise money now, except for by donation, the Roybrook Nature Center. They have several functions throughout the year, and then they also just ask for donations. And I think they get the majority of their funding through donations. Um, so, you know, it's, I love the little text, you know, this for send a dollar by text. Right. That's another way that technology oh, has yeah. helped some of these organizations, you know, yeah. relief efforts. You, if you text this number, they'll, you're donating $5 or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's a fast, easy way because most people have their phones in their hands nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a wonderful use of technology um, going back to that original question, but also the fundraising piece. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of organizations use um, um, different online features um, to raise money as well um, today. So there's a good, good, uh, good number of organizations that are doing that. Any, um, any 
specific comments um, or anything that you might want to offer to people that are thinking about volunteering, that are um, looking at um, different organizations to volunteer for? Any, um, any comments that you might want to add to uh, help someone, encourage someone to uh, get involved? Well, they should, they should do it. I think everyone should volunteer. Mm -hmm. And there's, um, let's see, when I was working, I, I never did because I had a crazy schedule. But, you know, now that I've done it, I've, I've really, you know, I've learned a lot about volunteering. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that, you know, you can find something that fits into your schedule if you can do that and something that you're interested in. Maybe it's only a couple hours a week, but it's something something you can do. Mm -hmm. Okay, Zach, how about you? Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of places you can find to see what volunteer opportunities are in the local. You know, you can use your search engines like Bing, Google, etc. to so just type in volunteering or volunteering opportunities, and I definitely there'll be lists and lists that pop up. Just go on your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever you can, and you'll find it there. Great, yeah. wonderful, great. And Leslie, you have any comments for the people watching? Well, I guess I would say find something that you, that you know you either want to learn or you think you would enjoy and don't feel like you have to volunteer 15 hours a week you know if you can only volunteer even like once a quarter or something mm -hmm. like that start get your feet wet decide if you want to do more and and once you get inside an organization you can really see what else there is um, sometimes it's hard to see when you're looking from the outside or just answering an ad. You get in here and you realize, oh, there's so much more that I can do here, yeah. right? Um, and, I, and then also something just popped into my head. There's lots of vacations you can take nowadays that are volunteer vacations. Mm, yes. mm -hmm. And so if you feel like just going and sitting at the spa for a week isn't fulfilling enough for you, there's lots of opportunities mm -hmm. for volunteering in places where they need help with dental clinics or, or you name it. Yes, um, that's true. And I think a lot of people do find those through their churches, but if you, again, if you type in your, your browser volunteer vacations, mm -hmm. a lot of things will come up and, and uh, they, of course, are gonna cost you money to get there um, and maybe Partly, whatever you pay is part of the contribution for the trip, for the what they need for the trip. But um, I would, I've gone on work trips before through church organizations. I've never done one on my own, um, but it's something definitely I would love to look into because I feel like it would give you time to really sink in and mm -hmm. almost like an immersion mm -hmm. with other people and talk about community. I mean, when you spend a week with people. You know, mm -hmm. you get to know them. That's right. And they become maybe lifelong friends, lifelong connections, mm -hmm. whatever. So, great, wonderful. Well, there you have it. Um, we have three uh, fabulous volunteers here um, Diane, and Zach, yeah. and Leslie. Mm -hmm. And I thank you all for being here today. Um, there are so many ways um, that we can volunteer and, and um, make uh, use, uh, good use of our time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree with Diane that everyone should volunteer to find that organization that, you're, um, that has a, um, uh, something that you're passionate about and that you want to know uh, more about. So uh, thank you for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed our program.